we're going to define the join count statistic, which will allow us to detect clustering in binary maps. So in a binary map, areas on the map, instead of being uh, many different colors indicating different variable values, instead the, uh, we reduce our map into a, a, a categorical scheme, a binary coding scheme. So we're going to lose information, we're going to take numerical data and make it into uh, some sort of binary classification. So is this an LDS neighborhood or is it a non-LDS neighborhood? Is this an obese state or is it a not obese state? Is this a high GDP country or not a high GDP country? We're going to take those numerical values and reduce them into this binary classification. And when we do that, the joint count statistic is going to be able to detect something called autocorrelation. I'm going to define autocorrelation in a later lecture, but for now, it suffices to say that positive autocorrelation is a map pattern uh, similar to what we've been called, what we've been calling clustering or clustered. Negative autocorrelation, that pertains to map patterns that seem to be uniform or dispersed. So we have like a checkerboard in this case. And in no autocorrelation, well, that's a map pattern that is random. Okay, and we're going to have a joint count statistic that's going to be able to look at these map patterns and the statistic is going to indicate whether or not we have clustering, randomness, or uh, uniform or dispersed distributions. In order to do the join count statistic, we have to define something called a join. And a join occurs when two areas on our map, two polygons, or if we're dealing with grids, two grid cells, have a common edge or boundary. And we're going to define a join, uh, two different types of, of join patterns the Rooks case and the Queens case. So in the Rooks case, when we have a target cell, so I'll put a T here, this is the target, and we want to know uh, which boundaries, which neighborhoods, or which zones on the map join with the target, we're going to use the rule that if the two, if the two polygons share a boundary, then those two uh, polygons are going to be considered neighbors. So in those cases, uh, we have uh, joins. And these, these joins are just the um, keeping track of whether or not two polygons are neighbors. In the Queen's case, we're going to include the Rook's joins, but we're also going to allow two polygons to be joined if they share uh, a corner. So they don't actually share a common edge, but they do meet at a corner. So we're going to include these joins as well.